This disaster could not have come at a worse time for Lebanon. The country is already in the middle of a full-blown economic crisis. Well, actually, you could call it a full-blown economic collapse. What has been called the biggest threat to its stability since the 1975 civil war. Currently, one in three people in Lebanon remain unemployed. The lira has lost 80 percent of its value since October 8-0. It was artificially pegged to the dollar for many years. Inflation is skyrocketing. Hyperinflation is a possibility. And more than 45 percent of people live below the poverty line. All this made worse by the coronavirus pandemic and delays in finalizing an IMF rescue package. I want to bring in Nasser Saidi, former vice governor of the Lebanese Central Bank and also former minister of economy and industry uh, of Lebanon. And he joins me now from London via Skype. I hope, uh, Mr. Saidi, that your loved ones and friends and family in, in Beirut and Lebanon are all OK. They, they're safe. Um, they just escaped. Um, they were in our apartment. The glass broke. Windows collapsed. Uh, but at least they had learned from previous experiences. We've had so much disaster in Lebanon that they went into the corridor. So at least that protected them. Mm -hmm. So like many people in Lebanon, oh, um, it's, it's yeah. a disaster. It's apocalyptic, as you've seen. Uh, we've never had anything like that, despite our sad history of, of disasters, explosions, bloody... Mm -hmm. Uh, but so this has overwhelmed anything that we've seen in the past. And the net result is extreme anger. I mean, after the shock, uh, what people are talking about, what people are feeling now is extreme anger. There is no longer any will to accept um, a system which is so corrupt, such incompetence that you allow <clears throat> explosive material to be stored in the port for six years and despite reports, nobody does anything. This is simply yeah. unacceptable. Let, let me ask you how you get to from A to B here, from a system that is that is corrupt, uh, from essentially, a, a, I mean, a kleptocracy in many ways, a banking Ponzi yes. scheme, corruption, yes. incompetence, the whole, the whole, I mean, we know the list of words that describe the Lebanese economy and the system, but we don't know necessarily how to make it better. How, how do you even begin here? Well, it's going to need political reform. That, that's very clear. Um, the job government came in following the protests which started in October. Uh, we had been promised as part of the protests and activism that we would have an independent government, i.e. independent ministers, who were not beholden to the kleptocracy. Uh, unfortunately, we did not get that. Um, effectively, you have an incompetent government. They have undertaken no reforms uh, since they've been in power, since, since mm -hmm. February um, of earlier this year. And yet, the, the reform agenda is very clear. Uh, you need to undertake monetary reform. You mentioned the, the Ponzi scheme run mm -hmm. by the central bank. You need to understand fiscal reform. We know exactly what needs to happen. Sectoral reform, the power sector, a major item of, of corruption. And despite that, nothing has happened. Um, the negotiations with yeah. the IMF were based, were based on a paper the government prepared, which listed a whole wish list of reforms. Not a single one has been implemented. And here we are, nine months after the protests, uh, getting pretty close to the anniversary, yeah. And nothing has happened. Um, so you have not only. So, what is your biggest. Can I ask you? It, yes. I, I, I understand the point you're making. But where are we going then? Because if after all the protests and obviously even pressure from the IMF, from France, from outside countries who are saying, we're not going to keep right. bailing you out unless you unless you put in place, put in practice right. real reforms. But you might look at a country that could be another Venezuela, right? With hyperinflation, it, with, with 60, I've 70, 80 percent of yes. the population out of work. Yeah. Well, we, Lebanon is becoming well, what I call a Libazuela. It's, it's a, another version of uh, Venezuela. You're getting now mass migration uh, being prepared. You're verging on hyperinflation. Last month's inflation rate was 20% per month. Once you start getting to 50% per month, that's hyperinflation. 
uh, you're getting a financial collapse mm -hmm. um, and banking collapse. The currency will, will collapse. And but the big thing, of course, is the humanitarian disaster. I think you mentioned already poverty rates, 50% of the population. Food poverty rates, 25% of the population. This is unprecedented. We have not had that since the famine of 1918. Yeah. So that's, this is where it's heading, yeah. unless yeah. there is intervention. And the only intervention I can see at the moment um, is from the outside to push, push an incompetent government and politicians out of power. Otherwise, you're going to get increasing violence, I think, on, in the streets. That, I think, is what's going to be happening because, very soon. Because one thing Venezuela doesn't have to deal with is a war like the Syrian war, you know, right on its border and the millions of refugees and potentially, you know, more sectarian violence. I mean, those types of things that are particular that are particular to the Middle East. That, that 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 are aggravating factors. Um, those, the, I mean, I mean yes, you could really aggravate. end up with even a worse scenario, right? Yeah. That is correct. That is correct. I mean, it it is it is a total collapse and meltdown, unprecedented in our history. But there are only two solutions that I see: either you get a full-scale revolt, revolution, potentially you could have a military mm -hmm. takeover. Uh, we are now having two two weeks of military law um, being applied. It may very well be that mm -hmm. the army decides that they want to go for a coup um, and then relieve the politicians mm -hmm. of uh, relieve us of the politicians. Alternatively, or together, mm -hmm. you might have external intervention, and you need this external intervention, not only from an IMF program point of view. In other words. You, if you want the IMF money and international assistance, you have to undertake reforms. But I think the other point is about governance <clears throat> and political reform. And President Macron is visiting Lebanon tomorrow. <clears throat> I think his message is going yeah. to be very clear to our politicians. Uh, you have to reform um, and we will not support you with any funding if you do not reform. Clearly, humanitarian aid yeah. has got to be a priority, has got to be a priority. But I think the political message has got to come from the rest of the world, and it's urgent. We don't want another failed <clears throat> state on the Mediterranean coast. You don't want another failed state like Syria and Iraq and others. The rest of the world really cannot afford yeah. that. Can Europe, can re Europe really yeah. look ahead and say, I'm going to have mass migration from Lebanon and refugees at its doorstep? Can we afford to have Lebanon yeah. become a failed state? Because that's where we're heading. <laughs> Nasser Saidi, thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, uh, on you. CNN.